Hello, it's that time again. Get up, get off the couch, and start tackling your own to-do list. Stay tuned. Hello, welcome to the Just Ask Bob show. I am your host, Bob Asadorian. First of all, we're going to kick this off with some very special thank yous. This is our premiere episode for season five. We've been with Cable 14 for nearly 10 years now. Very special thanks to Gail Grunlin for allowing us another season with season five. Special thanks to the camera people, the co-op students, all the people behind the scenes and behind the cameras that work so hard to pr produce our show and put it together for the viewers. As you know, this show is interactive. Every show kicks off with an email. You, the Hamilton homeowners, send us an email. Think of it as your to-do list. Why is it not being kicked off? Items around your home, whether inside or whether outside, send us your questions, and they are the basis for every single one of our episodes. We'll do the absolute best we can to create a show where we can teach you what tools to use, and what skills you need to put things together. Now there's you know, two ways to look at this. Obviously it's a DIY show. We want to get you motivated and get you pumped, get you up and off the couch to tackle your own projects. Now for whatever reason, you don't feel safe, you don't feel comfortable tackling your own to-do list, that's fine, no problem at all. Bring in a contractor. However, make absolutely certain your contractor is licensed. You're going to vet them, you're going to screen them, you're going to check for references. That way, again, if you don't do it yourself, fine. If you hire out, you're not going to get ripped off. The job's going to be done to your satisfaction. That's the basis of this program. Now let's kick it off with the viewer's email. Hello, Bob. I want to learn how to install drywall in my basement. Bob, please, can you do a show on drywall from Bashir in Hamilton, Ontario? Well, Bashir, thank you very much, and this worked out perfectly. Big thank you to the homeowner here, A, for allowing us to bring in the cameras, and thank you to Triple R for allowing us and the employees to put this together for you. Now, we want to give you some background information here on the job. This is an older Hamilton home. It's a basement that was already existing. Now that matters. Now as a contractor myself, I prefer a clean slate, a high and a dry basement to begin the renovation. Now this basement's been finished before, so let's go over some of the problem areas. Now the method of installation could have been better. The studs are actually strapped. It's two by twos and they fasten them directly to the foundation as opposed to using two by fours which will give you a nice three and a half inch cavity to really pack in the insulation. The planning and the design could have been much better. This is the drain that leads from the kitchen. Obviously this appears into the concrete to go to the sewer. Now again, I didn't frame this. If I was the one framing this, I would have used two by sixes on this entire outside wall for a couple of reasons. Two by six will give you much better insulation. Two by six will allow you to hide the pipe inside the wall. Two by six will allow you greater latitude and flexibility with the copper piping. Two by six will also allow you to bury the venting for the clothes dryer. Now here's the big difference now, I really need to explain. I'm proud of this show that it's real television. This is not reality. Now there is a difference. Difference being in real television with this show, number one, I am a real licensed Hamilton contractor and this is a real homeowner with a real budget, a tight budget. My job is to work within the parameters of the budget, to do the job accordingly and to satisfy the customer. Now reality television is a lot of bull and nonsense. Unlimited budget, unlimited advertisers and sponsors. In that case, being on a different channel, this whole basement would have been torn down, but at a massive expense. So my job again is to do this according to the budget and according to law and according to building code. Now let's go over some tools. We are drywalling today and we're going to try to teach you how to drywall. Now you're going to need drywall screws. These are the drywall screws, so it's very important you use drywall screws. 
lot of homeowners and a lot of people will use wood screws or any type of screw that won't work and I'll show you why later important to have a sharp pencil now let's take a look at the bit now for something this small we've got our try tested and proven Milwaukee but the key is the bit if you really want to zoom in here and focus on the bit for the viewers at home this is a recessed bit so this bit is going to create a dimple you want the screw recessed ever so slightly into the drywall that way when you mud over it it covers it up perfectly we also have a rasp for when your cuts aren't quite perfect you can rasp the drywall to get it to fit in tighter very important to some degree masks protection Bob's not sensitive if you are at home make sure you've got your mask you want a keyhole saw very nice tool with a sharp blade we'll illustrate this during the show how you cut the drywall we also have a little tilting tool here this is also very important your drywall sits here and you can tilt it upwards you don't have to get your fingers underneath the lift we'll demonstrate it in the show we also have a hole saw bit equally important to make cutouts for protrusions through the wall such as plumbing sharp knife very important to have a t-square and we'll illustrate this through the program as well up next we're going to be putting drywall on the wall we'll be right back Sunday afternoon, November the 25th, the Hamilton Bulldogs finish up a 3-3 three three weekend on the OHL tonight. It's the Peterborough Peets who will come to town, and the Bulldogs have had good success against the Peets thus far this season. They'll be looking to extend a little bit of that advantage and try to climb their way back up the Eastern Conference. You can catch all the action live in HD right here on Cable 14, beginning at 2 p.m. Welcome back to our drywall show. Now we're going to show you a couple of techniques at cutting and preparing the sheet before we start installing them. Now this is a T-square. This is a beautiful tool. It rides the top of the drywall. You can ride it all the way across. It's got a little groove. If you want to focus in here, there's a little slit right in there. That's where you start your knife and run it down, and then it's a matter of snap and score. We'll demonstrate it now with Frank. Oh, Frank, let's go over a bit more so we don't waste the drywall. I hate the waste. Now I'm going to go from the bottom up for the end. Oops. You want to stay tight? Okay, now we're going to score. I'll put this away. And Frank, you can do the honors. Nice, easy, clean cut. Okay, we'll set this aside. Now, what do we have next? the middle center sheet now we'll find out shortly but uh, one of my new guys and again everybody has to learn we had marks here set up for where to cut this open so it explain to those of you at home there's a reason for this this laundry room we've reversed the location the washing machine was originally here the laundry tub beside it and the clothes dryer here so our electricians have extended the wiring this one here for the washing machine that one there for the clothes dryer in the corner now the way they used to build these homes the laundry tub was here 
the plumbing came down on top of it across the wall. So we've changed that. We've tied in up here. We've brought in brand new copper all the way across. And we have four rough-ins or stub-outs. Now everything is labeled, obviously. Two are going to be for the hot and cold, for the flex lines to come up, to bring water to the laundry tub. The other two are going to be for the shut-offs, for the rubber or metal hoses that lead over to the washing machine. So we'll bring this guy over now. We'll explain what we've done with it. Okay. Thanks, Frank. Now, as you can see, there's two ways to do this. Now, we did this during the break. We cut these out to line up with the copper. I love using one of these bits. It just works beautifully. You make your measurement in and out. Now, if you don't have a bit, I mean, the old-fashioned way of doing it, and it works just as well, is you, were to, you use a keyhole saw. So you're going to push in with the keyhole saw, poke through, make a square cut. Now, regardless of how perfect or not you make it, you're going to be mudding around it. Now, we also have the outlet for the washing machine. So I'm going to cut that out now. Just set it here. Now, again, you just poke through. Make sure not to poke Frank behind you. Always check who's behind. Put a little bit of stability. Poke back through. One seat more. There we go. Now for those of you at home, this is worth anywhere from $12 to $25, depending what brand, depending where you buy it. The professionals have elect electronic rotary zip tools. There's a lot of nice power tools that'll go through there, but you don't need it. I mean, unless you're doing it every day, every day, you don't need it. For the average homeowner, pick yourself up a keyhole saw, and you don't even need the fancy bit or the full drill to make the holes for the plumbing. All right, Frank, you did measure this three times, right? I made sure. Okay, we'll find out for in a moment if it works. If not, that's what the mudding's for. Now, we've got a lot of obstructions here, so those of you at home, bear with us. We're going to have to fight to get this in. It was either that or cut the plumbing pipe out of the concrete. I'm in, mostly. Okay, now the outlet we need to... Now for those of you at home, the breaker's off for the washing machine power, breaker's off for the clothes dryer, and that's 240 volts. That'll certainly give you a nice uh, a jolt of electricity. Now electrician, he even wraps the perimeter with electrical tape just to be safe, but we'll make sure the power's off. Okay, let's try to play with this to get it in. We also have our little drywall jack that we showed you earlier. This is just beautiful. This will fit in underneath. And then if you need to raise the board, you just step on it. Okay, Frank, let's try to get this in the position. Should I lift? A little bit. Okay. I think we're good there. It's certainly easier than getting your, getting your fingers pinched between the concrete and the jack. Outlet worked out? Yep. Maybe Perfect. a little bit of shaving on the left. Actually, give me one sec. Before you shave it, let me pinch it in place. Now, we need a little bit of shaving there. Frank did a phenomenal job. By shaving, I mean we got to take a hair out of the drywall. So at least we know this worked. So we're going to get a few screws in here to hold it. All right, first one's a miss. That can happen. We're right on the edge, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. Now, for those of you at home, watch now what happens. This is the bit I was talking about. It creates a recess, a dimple. Little bit of a recess. Just what you need. Now, you want to put more than one in, just so you don't break the board. 
Okay, now we can make our adjustment here. So you can see Frank's taken off about a quarter inch of the drywall so that we can fit right around the box. There you go. Should be good to push out. Nice. That's a nice tight fit. Okay, let's both fasten this then. Now, we didn't mark our studs. Ordinarily, what you want to do is either on the bottom on the concrete, you want to use a pencil or a marker to mark your studs so you know where your wood is before screwing in. Are we going to remember? Should be able. To okay, go you hit you hit it over there, and I'll hit it on the right here. Now, as I mentioned before. This wall's got terrible framing, terrible. So it's going to take some really special mudding to get it to get everything straightened out. Remember it all where the next one is. Should be coming down here. Okay, give it a try. I'm thinking here. See, that's a nice recess. If you want to view, zoom in for the viewers at home, that's a nice dimple. You can see you create, and it's all automatic with the bit. Because obviously when you paint uh, a poor mudding job and a poor painting job, you're going to be seeing everything. You're going to see all the, def all the screw heads on the wall. You only want one about every foot or so. This one doesn't want to sink. If they don't dimple, you've got to pull them out and try again. Now we've got steel plates protecting the plumbing as it comes across. The importance of the steel plates is if the screw resists going through, it's hitting a protection plate. Now the protection plate can be protecting either wiring or plumbing. I'm all good on my side. Uh, maybe two more, one in, be one in between each spot. Now obviously, we have some wiring topped in from the old to the new. We installed this frame in order to give us a screwing surface. I really want to emphasize to those of you at home, and I'm the first one to admit and concur, this to a certain degree doesn't look brutal. So we've got a lot of crooked framing that's not true or straight. We've got a lot of odd patching, but it's all in the mudding. This is not a matter of it can be, this will be mudded to perfection. And once it's painted, this entire wall will be seamless. You will not be able to count the patches from the original. So it takes a lot of work. See, Frank knows anytime something misses, he'll try another screw. Okay, we've got another piece to cut for up here, and I think that'll just about fill in the patches. We're going to be right back after this for Bob's Bewares and Bob's Top Picks. Be right back.
Saturday afternoon, November the 24th, the OHL tonight returns to the first Ontario Center. Stephen Dillon and the Niagara Ice Dogs will make their first trip into Hamilton of the season to take on the Bulldogs. The last time these two teams met, it was a 6-3 Niagara victory, but of course the Bulldogs looking to extend a little home ice advantage like they did in the playoffs a year ago. You can catch all the action live in HD right here on Cable 14 beginning at 4 p.m. Let your kids know, in some cases, what they do with their phones could be more than just wrong. It could be illegal. Learn more online. A message from the Government of Canada. Thank you for watching our drywall show. We hope you enjoyed it. Let's take a moment for Bob's top picks and Bob's bewares. Now, as you've seen during the show, we put a lot of emphasis on Durabon 90. This product is absolutely phenomenal. One way to think of it is, when you add steel rebar to concrete, that's the intensity and the strength of this product, especially when it's overlapped with fiberglass mesh. Now, a Bob's Beware, any type of pre-mixed mud. Mud that's pre-mixed and ready to go. However, the exception is, you must understand, this is in context of your pre-fill. So you've installed all your drywall, your misses, and your corners and your joints, anywhere the drywall doesn't fit snugly, I don't like filling it with pre-made mud. I like filling it with Durabon 90 because it's going to be extremely, extremely strong. Now, after the Durabon 90 is done and everything seamed together and strong, yes, obviously, you have to use some type of pre-mixed mud for your feathering and to make your joints look invisible. That's very important. Now, we have some time left, so I want to jump into another question from a viewer. This is from Steve in Hamilton, Ontario. Hello, Bob. My roofer says that I do not need tar paper on my roof, and it's simply fine, legal, and allowable just to throw shingles on top of it. Bob, is this true? Steve, I appreciate the email, and yes and no, a little bit of a gray area. Now, the Ontario Minimum Building Code, it is put together with the reasoning in mind to create affordable housing or to keep housing affordable in Ontario. Now, I don't know when the last time you checked was, but homes are not, I mean not affordable, not in Hamilton, not in Ontario, not anywhere. But again, they have to set the bar somewhere. When your roof has a certain pitch, you know, let's look at a church pitch for a moment. When it's very steep, the rain and the snow will take off quickly. Hence, there's much less chance of the water getting up and under the shingles. When you have a low pitch, it takes the water longer to shed off. So under certain pitch requirements, the minimum building code says there must be tar paper, which is an underlayment, installed under your shingles. Now, the builders are smart. They're not stupid. They're out for the money. The builders will pitch the roof so that it just passes the minimum to not require tar paper. Let's have a look at what I'm talking about. This is your typical tar paper. Again, it is just that, tar paper. Now even this, even this is never used on homes. Depending on the size of your home, maybe for a hundred dollars you've got tar paper. Now let's think about it. Under certain conditions where it's snowing or it's winter time, you can't get up there to replace a few shingles. With the right amount of wind coming in the right location, you may have a tear off. You're going to get water underneath. I mean, this is better than nothing. And I, I stress that, that it's just about better than nothing. There are better products to install. This is deck armor. This product is synthetic. This is basically the new replacement for tar paper, although many are still using it. This product is rated by the manufacturer. It has UV protection. This product can sit open and exposed for up to six months. Six months. So if it's a bad time of the year and you can't get a roofer up there, you don't have any worries if you have a section of your shingles that bro blow off. Let's think about it this way. People ask me all the time, is, an average, is a shingled roof waterproof? No, it's not. Waterproof means being submersed underwater. Think of it this way. Your shingles are a row 
of properly layered umbrellas. That's all it is. Umbrella after umbrella after umbrella. The rain hits it, it sheds downhill. Certain slope, certain wind speed, the water will get underneath. And if you don't have any kind of protection, you're in trouble. So insist, absolutely insist that your roofer uses deck armor and it's by GAF, G-A-F. This will protect your roof. I, I have to mention this every season because it just boggles my mind. I've been going to my customers' homes and potential customers' homes for nearly 16 years to do estimates. Now I keep my mouth shut. If I'm called in for a certain item, that's what I estimate. There has to be some, you know, a, a fine line there between looking at and picking, th picking at things. So people that call me in for granite, quartz crystal, flooring, pot lights, as I park my truck and I'm walking up to the home, I mean, I'm a contractor with a good eye. I cannot help but notice when I see shingles on the ground or when I see the, the um, grading for the home slopes inward and I don't see any foundation protection poking up above the grade. So these are people that want, that are obsessed and fascinated with, you know, competing with the Jones. How many pot lights can we have? How much hardwood can we lay? We want quartz stone or solid granite countertops or rows and rows of pot lights. Those are interior cosmetic items. Nothing, and I stress this, nothing is more important than your roof and your foundation. You want to keep the roof watertight. You want to keep the foundation protected so you don't have water come into the home. If your roof isn't good and your foundation's bad, all the granite and quartz stone in the world isn't going to help you on the inside. Please be smart. Now, while we're talking about roofing, very important here to make the Hamilton homeowners aware. Our municipality does have a contractor's license. It's absolutely critical to know this. Recipients of this license card have taken a two-hour examination on the Ontario Building Code, Section 10, Homes and Small Buildings. We have submitted our information to the city, proof of insurance. We've passed a police clearance test. The city is doing its due diligence to vet us as contractors to protect you, the Hamilton homeowner and Hamilton taxpayer. If in doubt, 905-546-2424. Ask for licensing and building department. Building department to find out if your project requires a permit and then licensing to find out if the contractor is licensed. Absolutely important for all homeowners. Now, in closing, please visit our website, www.justaskbob.com. Again, that's www.justaskbob.com. Send us your submissions. Watch past episodes. We have another four seasons where we have these programs where you can pause, fast forward, and rewind Learn at your own pace. Or, if you're old school, Bob certainly is, pick up the phone, 289-649-0196. Again, that's 289-649-0196. Until next time, thank you, Hamilton. It's created to keep homes affordable in Ontario. Now, I don't know about you, but have you seen, uh, I don't know about me, but about you, have you seen a home? Wait, we're, we're, <laughs> we've got that. Yeah, I, I, I tongue twisted myself. I know we can.